nervous system is comprised of two main cell types. So there are the nerve cells that everyone is familiar with. Um, these are the ones that are responsible for carrying signals, you know, back and forth and controlling motion and things like that. But there are a whole group of other cell types known as glial cells. And generally we think about these cells as being supportive cells that create an environment where nerve cells can function optimally. And one of the things that, um, that we've been studying is a population of glial cells that, that act as progenitors. So they're, they're cells that have the ability to develop into other cell types in the nervous system. They're found in the brain, they're found in the spinal cord, and they play a very important role in um, forming uh, a type of cell which wraps around the nerve cell and allows signals to be uh, transmitted very rapidly. We know that the progenitor cells are there, but we don't know how these cells are controlled in the nervous system. Um, when are they told to make a new um, oligodendrocyte, which is the cell type that makes this myelin wrap, and when this happens, where it happens, what signals are used uh, to control their behavior is not well known. And so we've been developing tools that allow us to specifically um, label the progenitor cells so we can make them a certain color in the brain so then we can watch them. Um, we can also change their properties in very defined ways like taking out a gene specifically within that cell to change its properties and ask what does that gene do to the behavior? How important is that gene in this cell? And by doing that we, it allows us to to understand in more detail how it is that the behavior of these cells is controlled. And that's important certainly in terms of understanding how the nervous system is formed, but also how the nervous system repairs itself following you know, certain diseases and also injury.